Sound has power. The work of Masuru Emoto is one example demonstrating this. His experiments show the beautiful crystals that formed in water based on language and intention. Our words are intelligent vibration. We are individual creators just as Earth was created. We were made from sound, some believe. We create through sound. It is our being. What we speak, we become. And the silent inner voice inner voice just as much creates a reality. It is our words that explain our minds. What we speak and even when we think, we begin to influence all of that around us. Each word we speak has its own vibration, creating waves into the expansive universe. How powerful is that? Consider that when we speak, write, even think, those words carry meaning and energy which are then transmitted to others, whether we are sharing the message with only ourselves, to one person, or to an entire crowd of people. What we speak has a life of its own, creating waves just as a music note creates waves. Just as music carries, so do our words. When you are aware of the energy of what you speak, think or write, you can make more harmonious music that carries throughout the world. But the opposite is also true. If you are unaware of how your words and their power, you risk creating disharmony. Too often, many of us react with words without thinking about the words or how they are expressed. Yet when you understand the impact your words have on the world's energy, including your own, you may choose what you say more carefully. Cymatics is a study of vibration and its effect on matter. Dr. Hans Jenny, a Swiss medical doctor and scientist, coined the term and researched cymatics. By photographing various substances, liquids, pastes, powders, and more, they were vibrated to, by sound to show the acoustic impacts of sound waves. These photographs show shapes representing geometric figures, again, sacred geometry, and molecular structures in ordered patterns. This study combined with the findings in quantum physics may indicate the ancient beliefs and now modern physics Quantum physics are correct. Sound is the primordial vibration that underlies all of creation. Quantum physics indicates reality is an infinite and complex interaction of vibration, and what we perceive as solid matter is only a set of frequencies. We'll end with a video about cymatics and this very subject. This features John Stuart Reed, an acoustics engineer and scientist who has studied cymatics since 1999. From formlessness comes form. Just add sound. The cymoscope is a new type of scientific instrument that makes sound visible. And the whole thing is precision engineered. So this is a completely new type of instrument. I've built a number of them for scientists around the world. We've developed the Cymoscope app for both Apple and Android platforms. What you notice in the Cymoscope app is that when you play any of the notes in 440 tuning and then you switch to 432 tuning and you do a comparison, the pitch which is the least stable in the cymatic patterns is 440. The number 432 hertz divides beautifully equally, you know, way back to 1 hertz. So there's a neatness in the mathematics. 432 hertz is a really interesting subject. I had the opportunity to lie in the sarcophagus in the king's chamber. It's so quiet in there, you can hear the sound of your own breathing. It's so wonderfully reverberant. As a sound and acoustics engineer, I naturally wanted to know about the resonance of this granite box. While I lay in the sarcophagus, I made a glissando like this. Ooh. One particular frequency my whole body was kind of washed by the sound.
What I did was I had a PVC membrane manufactured that would fit exactly across the top of the sarcophagus. I had a speaker positioned in the bottom of the sarcophagus. At certain frequencies, what looked like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs start appearing. This one here, called the jet pillar, literally like a moving snake on the surface of the membrane. There's the cymatic saw loop. Here's the cymatic sun god. Here is the cymatic eye. A whole series of these images appearing. And the antiquities inspector said, how do you do that? How do you do that? And I said, I don't know, it's just happening. Three weeks before I was due to go out to the pyramids, this particular mission, I injured my lower back quite badly, and I was in a lot of pain. And about 20 minutes or so into the experiment, I suddenly realized that there was no pain in my back. All the pain had gone. It never came back. There was a real healing that took place. There is a definite correlation between the iconography of these ancient cultures and the musical instruments which they had invented. When laid his didgeridoo into my device, up on the membrane came these are absolutely aboriginal icons. The two other instruments were a Celtic horn. When he played that, what we got up on the membrane, we got Celtic knotwork. And then he had this amazing instrument about 15 feet long, this Tibetan horn. And what came on the membrane was a beautiful Tibetan mandala. Let's imagine, zoom in on one water molecule in any part, you would find the same thing. You can literally see the pattern on the surface of the cell. Well, now we realize the sounds all around us, the environment, listening to music, all those sounds passing through your body, particularly the low-frequency sounds, providing structure within the fluid in your body. And so that could have huge implications for medical science amplify the song of that tumor cell, you're then sending them back. What would happen is the tumor would implode and would be literally destroyed. Sound was present right from the beginning of the Big Bang. It even organized the matter in the universe, or so the cosmologists believe, that sound is primordial force. It's impossible to have light without sound. Thank you for watching. Please click subscribe and find us at the links in the description below. Until next time, feel better.